Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire to Lead, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua Dub underscore Stamper. Well, welcome back, Aspire Leaders and Teach Better family. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that I have just a most ridiculous guest here. Actually, I should say most ridiculous co-host and my great friend up in the Canada area, Mr. Brad Hughes. Thank you so much for joining me in this experiment episode. I'm thrilled to be here, Josh. And uh, not only are we uh, the co host with the most here in the Aspire to Lead space, but yeah, I- I've been known to be ridiculous. And I, I think we're going to have a ridiculous time tonight digging into all aspects of leadership and motivation, school culture, and uh, maybe a little bit of shenanigans thrown into boot. 100%. And this is where the audience can come in. For those who are listening, we are definitely seeking out your feedback in the direction of this episode. Obviously, I am going to try to put out more content in 2024, and that has been a charge and a goal of mine. And thankfully, Brad Hughes has said that he's going to be joining me once a month. And so we want to know from you, what kind of format do you want from us? What topics would you like to hear from us going back and forth and bantering? And I will say that Brad Hughes is someone that I absolutely love to hang out with. And this is really just a ploy to spend more time with him each month, but also to get his feedback from just the many years of experience in leadership. And Brad, I know you've been on the podcast before, but for maybe someone that's just joining us for the first time, you know, I just want to know a little bit about your background. Thanks. Uh, It's great to reconnect in this space and it's great to connect connect with the familiar uh, listeners as well as new listeners to your podcast. My name is Brad Hughes. I'm in Ontario, Canada. I'm a school leader. I'm a school principal at an elementary school, rural elementary school, serving about 230 students. And uh, this is my 30th year, Joshua, as an educator serving children and youth. So uh, I've uh, played a number of roles, a 16-year classroom educator, primarily in visual arts, but also in uh, French language, special education, uh, vocal music, just a little bit of everything in my uh, a classroom career. Uh, and then uh, since then, I've been both a, a vice principal in AP and a, and a school principal and serving kids and communities is what I'm all about, aspiring to create and engender wonderful relationships, and great communication and, and trying to create spaces where people look forward to coming every day and leave feeling glad they came even for a small way. So it's uh, wonderful to, to be with you. And I, I like you, I'm a training and development specialist here with, uh, with Teach Better Team. So that's where we got our start. And that, uh, that relationship keeps us going and keeps us inspired uh, and keeps us uh, striving to just be a little bit better each day. 100%. It is a true honor to work with you with the Teach Better team and super excited about what we're going to develop over this year. And like I said, for those who are listening, make sure that you're reaching out and, and letting us know the format and some of the topics that you would love to hear and have us discuss. And we're going to be kind of leaning on our admin mastermind. So if you're not part of that group on uh, with Teach Better, we meet every Tuesday morning. It's a fantastic group. And it's every Tuesday morning, like I said, 9 a.m. Eastern time. And you can always sign up at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. And we have that Facebook group also of just a growing community. And uh, I love that group so much. So we're going to reach out to them too. And so if you want to you know, provide your feedback in that Facebook group, make sure that you do that. But Brad, before we begin in our shenanigans today, I, I do want to ask you a question about just health and energy. Is this something that you are lacking sometimes? Sometimes, maybe uh, all the time. I mean, all <laughs> of us are all of us are aspiring to do better and be a little better each day. And, and managing our energy is key to being the best we can for both our uh, our communities and also our loved ones. Yeah, it's something I struggle with even today. <laughs> As we are talking, I have my uh, my coffee not too far away, but. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things, you know, as an administrator, as you know, you, you've been in this role for quite some time is that it's go, go, go all the time. And for me, it was getting the sugary snacks and finding coffee, energy drinks, soda, anything that I could put in my system. And unfortunately, a lot of times that was my meal and my only meal of the day. And I would crash and I'd crash hard. And so yeah. what I've been trying to do, especially the, the new year in 2024, is to find something that's going to be healthy for me, that's going to have natural ingredients and may have just a little bit of caffeine, but a little bit of healthy shots to get my day going. And what I've been using is Magic Mind. It's a phenomenal little drink that uh, I mix with my coffee. I shouldn't say mix. I just have in addition to my one cup in the morning, but it's phenomenal. 
And I just want to let everyone know that um, they are committed to having quality ingredients. They're constantly looking for the best supplies around the world, and it's a sustainable energy boost. So with that partnership that I have with them, if you go to magicmind.com slash Aspire, and for those who are watching on YouTube, there's a code here, Aspire20, that gets you 20% off in the next 10 days. And I would highly recommend you pairing this with something or just taking it by itself. And then it's going to get you that energy to keep you going. It's not going to get you jittery. It's not going to give you restless legs. It's not going to get you all the disgusting feelings that you might have with some of those other, you know, things that you put in your body. So magicmind.com slash aspire, use the code aspire20, that'll get you 20% off and hopefully get you through the day. I know it will because it gets me through my day, not only with the Teach Better team, but with my six kids. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy. So Abby Mastermind was phenomenal this morning. We actually talked about a topic that I would love to pick your brain on, which is on summative assessments. I know mm -hmm. the spring is happening right now. Uh, a lot of folks are trying to get in the classrooms, trying to get their observations, but then also trying to give some really hard sometimes feedback to some folks some teachers about what they're seeing in the classroom. So I would love to hear as far as kind of your technique in, in regards to not only getting into classrooms, but then also that important feedback component, you know, to get that to your teachers. I'm really blessed in my current school community uh, because of our size. I'm able to visit classrooms uh, multiple times a day and uh, try to be present and visible for all school transitions in and out uh, between periods uh, at recess breaks and lunch breaks as well. And just constantly trying to not only be a difference maker, but just making sure that the difference makers within our school building know that they have my support and my interest. And that that's everybody from uh, our custodial staff, our volunteers, our, our library techs, as well as our educators, everybody on staff. I, I want to make sure that they know that I'm present, available, and really interested in their success because that's what we're all about is, is coming together to improve kids' lives. And that is really, the I think, the key aspect of leadership is where, where a school leader uh, identifies a gap between uh, anticipated or expected practice and what is actually appears to be happening it's time to get curious and that one of the most courageous things that we can do is is let folks know that we may be noticing that gap and just get curious about what we're noticing and and are we seeing and experiencing really what is happening uh and and how can we address that gap and i wonder if addressing those gaps it, it, did that come up in discussion with the mastermind crew today yeah, I thought it was a really strong conversation about not only finding time and, and making it a priority to get in classrooms, but just the different ways to provide feedback, because that is a difficult space to be in, especially as an administrator. If you find something that maybe you would do differently or you find to be ineffective, to give that critical feedback in a way that's not going to feel judgmental or that you're trying to get rid of them. A lot of times around this time of year too, and this came up too, just in regards to districts that contract renewals are coming up in regards to like, are, is that teacher going to be renewed for the following year? And so with that feedback, maybe in February, March, April, there might be this undertone of, is this principal or administrator trying to get rid of me? When really it's just like, hey, I'm, I'm just trying to make you better in, in your role and your profession. And trying to look at this as a growth opportunity versus I'm just trying to kick you out the door. I think matching the expected feedback with the feedback that is going to engender growth is key. A great book I want to recommend is called Thanks for the Feedback and it identifies that, you know, in terms of the kinds of feedback we provide, mismatches can be really detrimental to what we're trying to engender, which is growth, understanding and collegiality around, uh, you know, taking next steps for improvement. If if we're having a conversation, Joshua, and you're expecting uh, feedback that is designed to uh, provide uh, praise or encouragement, uh, and I'm actually seeing uh, something where I want to provide some some constructive criticism, some some critical friendship. If we have a mismatch about what is expected, uh, then you're not going to be in a position not only to receive the feedback, nor to incorporate it. So as school leaders, uh, among all of our staff, we just want to sort of set the norms and we want to be clear about the kind of feedback that we're looking to provide, but also we want to seek information from those that we serve about the kind of feedback that they need and appreciate the most. So Brad, I want to talk about you in a role of receiving feedback. What were the best strategies that were offered up to you where you felt like it wasn't an environment of judgment, but one of trying to make you better? 
shifting from judgment to curiosity <laughs> kind, of, yeah. kind of reminds me of uh, the opportunity to partner with uh, rather than provide feedback to. So if we're coming together around shared goals, whether it's uh, administrative goals, academic goals, some of the best advice that I received, uh, Joshua, as an aspiring leader, but also as a, as, a, as a beginning school leader, was to provide feedback with empathy, come alongside those that were serving and, and that were uh, aspiring to move in in uh, in better directions and to to get curious about what we're seeing and position ourselves as leaders but also co-learners in the process not only what needs to happen but what additional information support training resources might be needed to help us bridge that gap this podcast is a proud member of the teach better podcast network better today better tomorrow and the podcast to get you there you can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast now let's get back to the episode all right, Brad, I want to ask you about this book. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah. So with that book, were there some strategies that were infused in the book that you felt was beneficial for administrators? The key takeaway I had, uh, we just dived into a little bit, was just that the, the the matching of feedback and being explicit about the kind of feedback that is either being sought or that is going to be provided. So uh, if you're having, uh, say, a performance evaluation conversation with a, uh, uh, with a teacher, uh, with a report, uh, what I try to do is reflect back and, and structure it. So uh, the, the person receiving the feedback, the, the, the results of the observation knows that, first of all, I'm going to try to reflect all of the great things that I see. I want to try to re reflect back best practice because often as educators, even though we're appear to be well connected in our hallways and classrooms, once that classroom door is closed, we, we may not know and not have reflected back to us the great things that we are doing. Uh, so that's one thing that I want, but I'm explicit about the fact that now, first, I'm going to take an opportunity to let you know, just list the in incredible things that I saw, the wonderful interactions, the student learning, the student responses. Uh, and then I, and then the second part of my evaluation conversation, I get curious about some things that I'm wondering about, not necessarily work that is not uh, at standard or not, not necessarily re re representing a gap, but it's an opportunity for me and an educator to have a conversation about uh, why uh, the educator chose to do what they did in the lesson I was observing or in, in whatever aspect of practice. So getting curious, here's what I saw. I'm wondering, uh, here's what I noticed. Can you tell me more about, and then through that conversation, if there's a, if, if we need to shift the conversation to an improvement in practice, then, uh, I get curious and I, I start to wonder, I wonder if you're aware of this resource, or I wonder how you are managing with this shift in literacy instruction, for example. So mm -hmm. just be being clear about the kind of feedback that we want to provide provides the listener and the, that person receiving the feedback, you know, both the scaffolding, the support, and also the permission to be vulnerable at times when it, it's going to, it, it's going to take that next step, the school leader coming alongside someone to, uh, to improve practice for the benefit of kids. All right, Brad, since this is a bonus episode, I don't want it to go too long, but I do want to have a bit today. So let's, let's do a little creativity. So, you know, for the listeners just for today, maybe we'll call it creative corner. Yeah, And I want to talk about the creative ways to provide feedback. So if there's something that you've witnessed, maybe it's something that you've done, I would love to hear, you know, a strategy of, of ways to provide maybe timely, maybe effective communication in regards to what was witnessed or seen or need to improve. Something that I love to do is to try to provide regular and maybe even a su like surprise feedback about the great things that I see uh, in the school building each day. I think it's empowering, but I think it's also reassuring to know that our colleagues and, and reports know that there's a caring leader uh, who wants the very best for each and every individual, whether it's an adult or a kid that comes in. So I, I try not only to observe and, and report on the great things that I'm seeing, but I also try to get specific on the impact that I think it's making or that I believe it, may, it is making for a child. So just, just for example, that, that moment of interaction uh, where an educator is, is assisting or, or uh, comforting a child in distress. Um, mm -hmm. It may be sort of a regular part of our approach, uh, just a regular part of our day, just, you know, a, any given minute of the day, we could be in that position where we're comforting a child in distress. But when I see that, I want to make sure that I provide feedback about not only what I noticed, but also the, the physical, the emotional, the social, and the cultural difference that that interaction makes to the child. Uh, if we if we always bring our feedback back, feedback back, if we always yeah. bring our feedback 
uh, back to how it's benefiting kids, uh, then that's one way to not only to stay creative, but also to stay motivated. And that's that I hope is a common language among all educators, no matter what important role you play, is that we are seeking to be better and to do better for and with the kids that we serve. Yeah, I love it. Well, I'm going to share something I, I'm going to steal from another administrator. I did not love. do this myself, but I heard it once I was out of administration and uh-huh. kind of kicked myself that I didn't think about it when I was in the role. So what they were doing was that they would go in and maybe it was a quick walkthrough or maybe an observation. And to give immediate feedback, they just pull out their phone and shoot a video of themselves. And then they would either text or email it to that teacher. And the reason they did this, which was brilliant, was the idea that in an email, a lot of times communication and tone is misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. But when you see the nonverbals and how they're speaking and tone of voice, it came across differently and more gentle, especially if it was feedback of something that needed to be improved upon. A lot of times though, it was a lot of praise. And when you're getting praise, it's one thing to get in an email. It's another to actually see the joy on the face of your administrator and the tone of voice of, of how proud they are of you and, and how excited, um, and you can get those in those inflections. And so that was something that they would do. They felt like if they went back to their office, that feedback probably didn't happen for a long time. They get distracted, move on to something else where they were just in the hallway outside that classroom. They'd knock it out real quick. Maybe it was a 30 second video. And then they would either text it or email it to the teacher. And I just thought that was a brilliant way to provide some feedback. It can be high tech. It can be low tech. It can be simple as uh, jotting it down on a post-it note and leaving it uh, on the teacher's mailbox. It it can certainly be just a quick message or a text message after you've observed something. But I I think the, the key is to be willing to, and, and, be willing to, I guess, demonstrate cr- uh, uh, courage and creativity in in shifting the feedback from praise to feedback for growth uh, when it's obvious that it's needed. I, I think that's just a, a critical thing that school leaders um, need to to be committed to each and every day. And, and it's, it's it's never easy. Uh, it's never easy to uh, to provide feedback that can be interpreted or received as negative or detrimental because. We're really we're really focused on feedback for growth, but shifting the focus from feedback for praise to feedback for growth. I'm wondering if you can think of any creative ways or uh, anything, even the involvement of uh, of peer or student or uh, or mm-hmm. family feedback. Uh, Joshua, I'm wondering if you if you have heard of or can think of any examples that where variety of feedback might be welcome. Oh my goodness, I I have definitely reached out to parents before, and especially like. I don't know about your campus, Brad, but I just feel like our teachers hear so much negative things mm-hmm. about just teaching education, a lot of pressure on them, and sometimes they're their worst critics themselves. And so, you know, trying to find opportunities for our parents or students to speak into the impact that they're making on their on their either their kids' lives or on their own lives is something that you know, we try to tap into multiple times a year not just on the teacher appreciation week, because that's a given that's going to happen. But other times, you know, those Octobers, those Februarys of the year where, you know, teachers are really struggling, you know, trying to find opportunities to, to get some feedback, positive feedback from those folks. Um, I will also say, you know, you had mentioned, Brad, the idea of a handwritten note on a sticky, you know, even just a, a simple index card. I, I remember I wrote something positive to a teacher. Mm-hmm. I was trying to do it quickly wrote some positive things down on the note card and, and put it in the mailbox. And then months later it was on their wall and it was evident that like that made an impact. And and that's not to, you know, tap myself on the shoulder because that's not what I'm trying to do. Right. The idea though, cause I'm horrible at writing notes. I, I don't like my penmanship. I write like a doctor, don't get paid like one. And so sometimes it's really hard for people to read it. And so, you know, I always would try to, find some legible way. So typically it wasn't an email, but I will say that there is power in handwritten notes. And there are plenty of times that I've, I've seen teachers keep that, that note in a, in a drawer or on their desk tapes or on, on their wall. Um, just because, you know, you do need those times of uplifting words of encouragement. And so I, I would say that my own experience and the, and what I've done and seen, I would say that there is a lot of power in those handwritten notes. As school leaders, accepting feedback on our own performance is also critical. 
you know, uh, being open to receiving feedback from any stakeholder and recognize that we're, we're, we're all doing you know, the very best that we can and the very best we know at any given moment uh, to serve our communities. And, and sometimes the feedback that we receive is unexpected, it's sudden, it's surprising, and sometimes it can hurt. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can hurt uh, where there appears to be a mismatch of understanding between the effort, the emotion, the energy that we're pouring into the love we're pouring into our school communities. We have to remember that, you know, we... We can never control how anyone might respond to our work in the world. And so when we have an opportunity and we get feedback like that, it, it does provide us with an opportunity for even greater clarity. Where might we uh, provide even more great, even greater clarity on our, our perspectives, our philosophies on administering and adhering to uh, state, district or local policies? It's an opportunity. I mean, feedback is just that it, it's feedback. It Sometimes it hurts and sometimes it feels tremendously personal because let's face it i mean serving and working with humans and kids every day it it, it is a personal yep. profession but that's something that i'd encourage all school leaders to continue to grow into is is accepting feedback for what it is it's an opportunity to clarify your own priorities to reflect on the things that we do say and uh, and the, the things we do the things we say in our actions and and seeking for an opportunity to clarify if, if necessary mm -hmm. when we receive feedback that we that we think is harmful or hurtful yeah, 100%. I will just add one last thing just in regards to feedback. I know I was trying to reflect with my own leaders that I've been under and, and worked with. And, you know, if if they tried to build a relationship with me, they really cared about my development. And I felt that I trusted them. I respected them. Obviously, those words of feedback are going to hit different. And I'm going to probably take that into account more so than it may be someone that I feel like it's just checking the box. They don't care about me as a person or my development as a, as a leader, then that just hits different. And so, you know, for anyone that's trying to give feedback, make sure that you're definitely attacking the heart and getting that relationship built and that trust, um, especially if you're a brand new leader on a campus. And Brett, I know you've, you've dealt with this too, is like, sure. sometimes it's hard when you first get onto a campus to be able to give that feedback when there's not a whole lot established between you and that teacher. I think as long as you are entering every relationship, every conversation, whether you're brand new to a community or whether you're uh, a seasoned vet at a particular uh, campus or faculty, Joshua, as long as you continue to uh, to say and, and to live uh, that your leadership is about continuing to earn and engender trust uh, between yourself and your reports and, and uh, amongst all faculty and all staff members and the more you invest into those relationships, we, we talk about that relationship piggy bank, where if, if there is a setback or you're, you're giving critical feedback about a shortfall, yeah. uh, you've developed that relationship. So you could, you've, you've invested in, you've made those deposits with praise, with, with humor, with love, with concern, with support. And then when you have to make a withdrawal, you know, you hopefully have in, her, earned the trust that will allow the relationship to sustain because as supervisors, we have to give critical feedback when, there's a gap between expected performance and actually performance on the ground. Yeah. Clear communication is kind. Clear is kind. I learned that from a great Brad Hughes. Have you heard well, of that it, guy? I, I, I've heard of that guy and I, I'm just going to be honest and and uh, and vulnerable with you and everyone watching and listening. It, it's something that I continue to grow into. I, uh, I, I, I strive to be uh, even more clear. Uh, I strive to be even more precise, uh, but also having hard conversations, uh, critical conversations is among the most delicate and uh, um, I think among the most um, energy intensive things uh, that we as school leaders uh, are, are tasked with, whether it's a critical conversation with uh, a student, a parent, caregiver, or a colleague. Uh, so yeah, it's something I continue to grow into, Joshua. Yeah. Well, Brad Hughes, I am just honored to speak with you, to be connected, to work with you on the Teach Better team. And I cannot wait for future conversations with you on Aspire to Lead. For those who are watching on YouTube, make sure you're pushing that subscribe button and super excited about the community that's not only being built here, but then also on the Teach Better YouTube page. So yeah. make sure you're pushing that subscribe and like, but then also we would love for your comments in the comment section in regards to, you know, what you want to hear in regards to topics, maybe just some questions um, similar to what we do with the mailbag. Brad and I are, are definitely open to provide any feedback that we can. And Brad, uh, for those who may want to connect with you beyond just our conversation today, how may they do that? Thanks, Joshua. It's been great to be with you. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so energized by the opportunity to 
not only uh, you know provide uh, some service and some feedback to listeners and to aspiring leaders, but also to be engaged in the learning along with you. And so, you know, the questions that come to us are are really valuable for our own professional growth as well. Uh, as far as reaching me, you can reach me uh, uh, through the Teach Better. Uh, it's uh, Brad at TeachBetter.com. Uh, my Twitter or X handle is there at Brad underscore Hughes. I'm also on Instagram at underscore Brad underscore Hughes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm also uh, well connected with the Joshua triple underscore stamper over there too. So if That's you're a not able sir. to reach me, just uh, just uh, reach me through Teach Better or reach me through Joshua as far to lead. I'd, I'd be delighted uh, to continue the conversation or uh, in our uh, private uh, uh, admin mastermind Facebook group as well. Brad, I just want to say you did a phenomenal job. I'm going to give you five pitchers of syrup as far oh, as your rating today. Delicious. And uh, thank you very much. And I'm not going to waffle on my rating for you, Joshua. I'm going to give you five, <laughs> five out of five Colorado avalanches. Thank you, sir. That is an honor and a privilege to get that rating <laughs> from such a wonderful administrator. And I, as Spider Lead folks, I just want you to know that uh, we're super honored to be with you and, and for you to tune in. Thank you so much for coming each week and just look out for more content between the two of us as we have you know, a goal of, of creating more content this 2024. If you need anything, please reach out. Brad, again, thank you so much for joining me on Aspire to Lead. Always a pleasure. All the best to you and uh, continue to success with Aspire to Lead. And I know we'll be in touch soon.